Hello everybody, it's Dana Sullivan, the Stampin' Chick, here with another Make It Monday! <laughs> How are you today, my friends? I hope you had a wonderful weekend. Let me just check to see if I am live and in the right place. It appears that I am. Let me go here and maybe I will be able to see comments. That's always a plus. Okay. Doo, doo, doo. This new Facebook thing is, um, is interesting. So when they separated out the, um, when they separated out our business pages from our personal pages, um, and made them two totally separate uh, profiles, it really kind of messed me up a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, it kind of just something to get used to, you know? Okay. I think I've got it here. Maybe I do. All right. So hello. How are you? Uh, hi Luann. How's it going? I hope you're doing good today. Um, I see that some other folks are coming in. Please feel free to uh, say hello. I would love to visit with you. Hey, Miss Tara, how's it going? All right, so I think I'm okay and I'm live. All right, now uh, I have some a little bit of uh, housekeeping to go over before I get started on the project, but uh, I would love for you to um, share my video here. Go ahead and share it on your Facebook page uh, so your friends can see what you're doing and what we're crafting and you know, sharing is caring and crafting is always more fun with friends. And uh, if you wouldn't mind to give me a thumbs up or a heart to let me know that you can hear me okay, I would absolutely love that. All right, now, I said I have a little bit of housekeeping to do, and um, I just wanted to remind you that uh, the other day I had posted um, that uh, I had a promotion going on from then until the end of November, so you have just a couple of more days left, uh, that if you place a $35 order or more using this host code, then you will be entered into a drawing to win one of these two uh, stamp sets, which are in the new upcoming celebration brochure. These are not yet available for demonstrators to earn either. So you will be getting these right about the time that demonstrators will be able to do their pre-order. So if you would like to get a brand new up and coming stamp set that is not yet available, you can place an order of $35 or more and use this host code and you will automatically be entered into the drawing and whoever wins will get to choose which of the stamp sets they'd like okay now if you want to order $150 or more don't bother using the host code you're going to get stamp and rewards of your own for having a qualifying host order and I will still in, uh, enter you in the drawing for one of the stamp sets okay so if you have a big wish list and with the holiday items going away soon, go ahead and order those things. If you have $150 or more, you get celebration or stamping up. Oh my goodness. Stampin' rewards <laughs> on top of your $150 worth of product. So it's a great deal and you'll still get to enter into the drawing. Okay. All right. So there is our thing. Oh, also, um, if you have ordered from me in the last several months, uh, I already have your name and address down to get uh, the new Celebration and Spring Catalog brochures shipped directly to you. But if you have not ordered from me in the last few months or you're brand new to my page and you're not a demonstrator and you don't have a demonstrator yet, let me know and I will happily send you a catalog as well. Okay, so those brochures should be going out. I I believe uh, early mid December. So just let me know if you need a brochure. I'm happy to get it for you. Okay. All right. Here we go. It is time to get started on our project. Let me just check. Uh, it looks like Tara says I froze. Am I still frozen? I don't think so. Okay. 
All right, that's good. Well, that's good. Okay, as long as I'm not. Hi, Miss Elaine. How are you, darling? Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. All right, we're getting started here. I am using the Leaves of Holly stamp and die bundle for today's project. Now, this is the last Monday of the month, and that means it's also the Stamper Showcase blog hop. So you want to head over to my website. You can go to thestampandchick.com and find today's post, and you will find the um, roster for our... Um, blog hop. Okay. Oh, I see some more folks are coming in. Hi, Miss Mary. How's it going? Sherry. Hello. Hi, Holly. How are you? Oh, I'm so excited y'all are here. Thank you so much for coming and joining me. All right. I have the Leaves of Holly stamp and die bundle. Now, everything that you see here, well, the leaves, the berries, and even the sentiment strip are part of the die set. Okay. Isn't it great when Stampin' Up! includes a sentiment label that goes along with the stamps? I think that is one of my favorite things. <laughs> so we have this one here and we have this one. Now this is the one I'm going to use. And then you'll notice with the leaves and the berries that there is a background piece that will cut out the stamped image. And then there's a foreground piece that cuts out lacy details, all right? Now, I'm going to be using the background piece for the berries because I'm going to stamp those directly. But then I, um, oh, you're going to have to just watch. Oh, I'm so sorry, Miss Dabby. Okay, uh, and then this piece I'm going to use right here, all right? So I have one of each, the big one and the small one that I'm using here, and then I have the label, and then I have the berries that I'm stamping and die cutting out, okay? Now, that background is absolutely beautiful. It is the time-worn type embossing folder, and one of the things that I absolutely love to do with my embossing folders is to use them as a background for my cards because this is an awful lot of negative space that's open, right? It's not a busy card. It's not highly detailed and decorated. So when you have a lot of open space like this, adding some texture from an embossing folder can make all the difference in the world for your project, okay? Now, I'd like to hear from my girls who are the simple stampers who don't like a whole lot of extra fluff and layers on their projects. Y'all go ahead and give me the hearts. Send the hearts a flying, ladies, because this is the kind of project that is for you, okay? The embossing folder does almost all of the work. It's spectacular. All right, keep that in mind. Okay, now this right here is one of the most beautiful dies that I have ever seen. I absolutely love it. And it is from the Delicate Edges die set. And you can see there's four absolutely gorgeous dies here. I've used this leafy one with the um, Artistically Inked collection. So pretty. This one is great for the um, uh, ocean type themes and things like that. And this one's a really nice little border across the bottom of a floral card. I mean, they're all just absolutely gorgeous, right? Okay, so that is what made this little lacy piece right here. All right, now let me set these aside for just a moment. I've already got my stamps on blocks. I'm also going to be using Evening Evergreen and Mary Merlot ink. Now, I believe on my blog post it said Cherry Cobbler. That was incorrect, and I will be fixing that as soon as we get finished with our live this evening. It's actually Mary Merlot, not Cherry Cobbler, okay? All right, I'll set those over there and bring in my supplies. What I'm going to need are my Evening Evergreen card base. This measures 8.5 by 5.5 and scores at four and a quarter inches. 
Now I'll go ahead and give that a nice crease. I have two pieces of very vanilla cardstock that measure five and a quarter by four inches. And as you can see, I've already got the one embossed with the time worn type embossing folder. So that one will go there and this one will go on the inside because we're using a dark card base. Of course, we need to put uh, a lighter piece on the inside because no naked insides and no naked envelopes, right? Okay, and then I have my gold foil doily piece already die cut and ready. I've got my sentiment piece cut. I've got the little die cut piece for my berries. And then as I had mentioned, one of each of the sizes of the big and the little um, die cut leaves, okay? All right, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and start assembling some of this stuff here. All right, with the time-worn type, it may be hard to see the orientation. There actually is a right side up and wrong side up. Um, because even though you can't really tell very well, there are some words that you can make out. Um, we know what harvest and, um, there's another and forever happy. So when you're looking at this piece, I always look for the forever. <laughs> it's just my, my quick go-to reference. I can see that's the way it's upright and I don't mess it up, okay? So I'm gonna bring in some of my stamp and seal here. And with these really detailed embossed layers, it's important to use a good share of adhesive, especially around the edges, because otherwise you can end up with this kind of weird ripply effect if you only tack it in the corners. Now that's great for a flat piece of cardstock, but if you've got some of this texture, you don't want the ripples in there. It just looks weird, right? So you really wanna make sure and get adhesive all the way around the edges. All right, now I'm gonna put this piece down directly onto my card base and I'm pressing it nice and even to make sure that I don't have that ripple effect. I really feel like that's very important, you know? You don't want that, it's just ucky. <laughs> just ucky. Okay, now then, I'm gonna use some multi-purpose liquid glue, and I'm using this because I have all of these little openings, you know, the detail, uh, lacy edge and everything. And um, if I were to use a tape runner, it would fill in all of those holes. And, you know, we don't want that. We don't want adhesive sticking out through everything. So I'm going to take my multipurpose liquid glue and very carefully, if this is not you, if you are a heavy handed stamper, then you need to get your silicone mat and a sponge, okay? <laughs> Fair warning, my friends, but if you can handle lightly squeezing the glue and just running it along that top edge, and then I'm going to put a little dot right there, and if you find that you've got a spot you're a little heavy on, just spread it out. And I mean, this needs to be light because with foil paper especially, if you ooze even the tiniest bit of glue over the front, it leaves this weird, streaky, smudgy weirdness. Okay, we'll just call it weirdness. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to put this piece down. I'm lining it up with the edges of my card. And I've got it on this side lined up nice and even. I'm just going to bring it on across like that and then I'm giving it a nice fair press okay so now we have that and then I'm gonna add some glue to my leaves as well so again if you're heavy-handed get your silicone mat out don't do this and see even I did that a little bit heavy <laughs> Uh, don't do it heavy handed or go ahead and use your your silicone mat and a sponge so that way you don't smudge glue everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to take this as a guide. It does not have glue on it yet. 
and I want it to be something like this. So right about there. And I'm going to touch right there on the tip to get that little bit of excess glue I got off of it. All right. And then on the other one, a little bit of glue. Remember with this multi-purpose liquid glue, a little dab will do you, right? Okay. Here we go. And then right about there. All right, now that's done. Okay, let's do some stamping, shall we? All right, I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment. I'm gonna bring in my inside panel because this is what we're gonna stamp inside. And actually, I need to bring my stamp set back for just a minute because it's missing. Okay, well, I will show you what I do then. If I can find it. And if I can't, well, we'll make one. We'll just make a new one. How's that? All right. We're going to make a mask. Okay. So I have a post-it here. It's got a little bit of tacky left right there on that side. I'm going to take a little bit of ink since this is the color I'm going to use. And I don't want to have to re-ink or clean my stamp or anything like that. I'll just go ahead and use that same ink. I've stamped it onto my post-it note okay and now I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and fussy cut really close to the berries okay and when I say really close it's okay to go just inside the edge of the berries and I'll tell you why because when you put even the thickness of a single piece of paper on top of another piece of paper to stamp that edge of that single piece of paper, even as thin as a post-it note, will create a line, a halo of sorts, around whatever it is that you stamped. So I like to cut just inside the edge. And you can see here, it's just the tiniest bit inside the edge. Uh, so that when I stamp it down, it goes all the way to the edge instead of giving me that halo. Okay, so there's not going to be a gap between the thing I stamp and the thing I stamp over. It'll be all nicely merged together when you do this. Okay, and you'll see what I mean better when I actually get it done here. So bear with me just a moment. Okay. And I don't have to get right in between the berries. I don't have to worry about that. I just want to get around the edges. And of course, as I'm cutting, you know, I've got a little bit of sticky left still here. So that's good. I'm cutting a little off, but it'll be okay. You just want a little, a tiny bit, just enough to hang on to it. Okay, you don't want it to slip and slide when you stamp. You want it to stay where you put it. So we're going to do that. All right. Now let me get this last little bit here. Thank you for bearing with me on this. This is a fun trick, though. You're going to love it. Now you can literally do this for anything that you want to layer one on top of another or in front of something or make it look like it's behind something. This is how you do that, okay? All right, now again, as I said, you can see there's a teeny tiny little edge there. So I didn't cut too far in. I just cut the slightest little edge around it, all right? And then I'll show you the finished piece. You can see right here, there's a little bit of halo there. Do you see that tiny little gap in line? That is from the paper because it really is just the tiniest little bit makes all the difference okay so you can see here it goes right up to the edge and that's because this was put just slightly off or I had stamped it just slightly off but I'll show you what I mean okay so I'm gonna bring in my pierce mat because we're using photopolymer stamps 
I'm going to bring in my Mary Merlot ink again, and this time I'm stamping my berries directly onto my paper. So I'll do it right about there. Okay. And then I'm going to take my mask and put it directly over the top. And you'll notice there's the tiniest little halo of line where the stamped image is a little bigger than my little cut piece. Okay. I hope that makes sense. And then I'm going to take, um, that is the right one. Okay. This is the, I believe it's the larger leaf. Uh, it is not. It is the smaller leaf detailed stamp. And I'm going to tap, 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 not smush, smush, smush. And this piece is going to stay down. And I will just do this. And you'll see it fits right up against the berries. Okay. So you see there, there's no halo between it and you can't see it over the top of the berries. So it looks like the leaf is behind the berries, right? Isn't that awesome? This is a super easy trick that you can do with just anything. Okay. So whatever you want to be in the foreground, whatever you want to be in the front, you stamp that first onto your card. Okay. And that's what you make a mask of. And then you stamp the things in the background over the top of that. Okay. I hope that made sense. All right. Now one more here. Now, if I wanted, I could cut a mask for this one as well. And then it wouldn't show them overlapping each other like this. But I don't care so much about that. If you do, you could certainly make another mask. Okay. And do it the exact same way. I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to stamp this directly down. Okay. And then now you can see I have both of my leaves behind my berries. And I can save this mask. I'll put it in my stamp set and it will be there for the next time unless I lose it again like I did. And then I'll just make another one, right? <laughs> it's not a big loss if you do lose it, okay? It's just little, so it's okay. Um, but I will just stick this right inside here and right over the top of where the berries go so that way I know that's what it is and it's not taking up any space. So because of the way that I put all of my things together, this is the way I need to do it because the photopolymer stamps are attached directly to the back so I can't just tuck it behind and then I have my dies here on this side which will kind of mess it up and pluck it off and all those things. But if I put it right there on top of the image, then I know that's my berries and I've got the little mask right there. So it's wonderful, right? Hey, Naomi, how's it going? All right. Now then, let's see. This is the inside of the card and it is done. So let me grab that little die cut piece and let's see how good we are on camera. <laughs> This one's fun. Um, I'm going to stamp the berries onto my die cut piece. Not too shabby. All right. Now I have that. And then also we need to do the envelope. So I like to do the same inside as I do on the envelope. I really just, it's just easier for me that way. I don't have to come up with something new and it ties the card and the envelope together. And then I just put the berries there because adding a leaf seemed kind of a, a lot. So that's what I'm going to do on my envelope. So I'll take my berries and I'm going to stamp them once there, turn them around and stamp them once here. And I'll bring that mask back in so I have it right here. It's accessible and I know where it is. I'll put it down just like I did on the inside. And then I'm going to stamp my leaves. Okay. Uh, 
There's a volcano erupting. <laughs> oh my gosh. Is it on the same island that you're going to? My friend Naomi is going to Hawaii and she's not taking me with her, right? How rude. <laughs> she's going to have a great time though. And she's going to post lots of pictures so that we can live vicariously through her. <laughs> All right. Now there's one and I got to put this back on because my ink pads are juicy. So I'll put that back down and stamp the other one. Okay. Just like so. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. Now then I need the Mary Merlot ink, my little label and season's greetings again tap 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 not smush 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 i am going over season not taking you i'm so sorry <laughs> you're right touche touche you know this thing <laughs> okay here we go stamping down all right there we go Let's get this card assembled then, shall we? All right, bring this all back in. I will put this piece on the inside. And since it's flat, we can tack it like we would normally tack a layer. We don't have to worry. It's not going to ruffle or fluff or anything like that. All right, if I can get my card open. There we go. Okay, beautiful. All right, now this piece and this piece are going on dimensionals. So let me do this. And I'll do one right there. These will go here and this will go here. And we will be done with this card. Isn't that beautiful? Now this really was pretty simple, but it has some fun little techniques to go along with it. So I absolutely love that. I'm all about the techniques, right? Techniques are so much fun. Okay, so there you go. I hope that you guys have enjoyed the card. It was a lot of fun to make. This is going to be uh, added to my stash of Christmas cards that I'll be sending out in the next couple of days. So um, if you'd like a Christmas card, leave a comment and let me know. And, you know, maybe I'll send you one. <laughs> All right. Remember, folks, you have until close of business uh, on the 30th, which is two days from now to place a $35 order or more to earn an entry to draw for one of these stamp sets. They're super, super cute. This one is absolutely adorable. And this one, I am in love with the sentiments in this one. I mean, I, I've not seen a stamp set that has so many earnest statements in it. It's okay not to feel okay. There are so many ways you might feel right now. Alone shouldn't be one of them. Some days are harder than others. I mean, this is just amazing, right? I love it. So anyway, there you go, friends. And uh, remember to visit my blog, thestampanchick.com, and you will be able to find uh, the supply list that I will update and as well as the other blog posts from the other Stamper Showcase design team members that are all about the holidays Lots of love, lots of Christmas cards, okay? All right, thank you all so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I will talk to you all another time, okay? Remember, the 1st of December, I, I should remember, like I, I told you this five seconds ago, this is new. <laughs> the 1st of December starts the 12 tags of, uh, 12 tags of Christmas. Oh my goodness, not Halloween got the 13 days of Halloween treats and the 12 tags of Christmas. They start on December 1st, okay? So every day, Monday through Friday, I will be posting a new 
beautiful Christmas tag. Lots of fun, lots of details. You're going to love it. Don't miss it. Set your alarm, set your timers, whatever. So I will see you all on, what is that, Thursday? Oh my gosh, Thursday. I'll see you in two more days. All right, take care, friends. Bye for now.